Land videos. What is up guys? Welcome back to Halfland Performance. We're doing a hands-off video today uh, because I wanted to show you and I need my hands on how to mate all of our parts together here which would be our Halfland 800 plus horsepower J32, J35 pistons that do come with oversized thicker wrist pins. Um, they are plus one millimeter thicker and also C-clips are included. We have our full kit here. There's all of our pistons and then we are mating them to our J35 uh, 1300 horsepower Hafferland rods and it's going in this girl right here as you can see got most of the front covers on I got the water pump oil pump everything on there so uh, still need to I have the rings gapped but I'm gonna show you guys today just a quick video of how to mate all of this rotating assembly together so to get started, you are going to need the proper tools. What we like to use, we use some picks. Uh, different styles this is a 90. This is just obviously a straight. And then this is kind of like an old crooked hooked one. I don't know what they call it. Uh, we have a flathead here. And then this is for our piston rings. We are not going to show you guys how to install the piston rings. Uh, maybe that could be another video. I'm not sure. A little short on time guys. Like I said, Hurricane Ian just passed. So I want to finish up this motor uh, pretty quickly. Our customer Colton has been waiting uh, a good amount of time for this guys. Probably more than double than usually what it takes for us to build these motors simply due to COVID, lack of supplies, uh, locating the motor, shipping took nearly a month, which was incredible. Uh, I don't know what they did. They literally took three months just to ship it, and then it was like another two weeks, so over a month. It was like a month and a half just to ship. But anyways, yeah, we use this. So basically the rings are like this, and it forces them open, and then you can slip them over instead of doing the, the twisting motion where you seat it, and seat it, and then you twist them on. Uh, we used to do it that way, but we prefer using this tool now. So staying on the topic of tools, we really, or I really like this. Um, I've used it for all my different builds. Basically, it's just a soda. It's a two liter, um, like soda bottle carrier tray so the two liters would sit in there i think i picked it up from publix they they were just throwing them out and i'm like damn i can use that for something because at the time i needed a lot more storage because i don't know if you can see over there look at all of our engines man so i got about five six different big ass buckets full of um j series parts i have four complete engines and then i have three or four engine blocks over there so i have the majority of my engine inventory over there you can see heads cams all this shit intake manifolds but anyways i was looking for storage and i found this works perfectly very very well and it helps keep it, everything organized so what i do the way i set it up guys um, I always reference the engine as, as, as if I'm standing in front of the car. So the car would be like this, driver's side here, passenger side here. This is the front of the engine. You can tell that's the front because you have all the accessories over here. So starting, starting from the back, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that helps me keep track of what is going into where. Now, whenever you flip it over, you gotta remember it's gonna be it's gonna be um it's gonna be opposite. These are gonna be back over here, upside down. So you know what I mean? But it doesn't really matter because you're you're installing the piston and rods from the top of the motor anyways. So that's why I go with this. That's why I like to organize it this way. Um, it, it may look a little funny, but dude, it's it's worked. So don't knock it until you try it. Now to start, you obviously I already went over the tools. You need to get all your materials, 
our Hafferland 800 horsepower J32, J35 piston sets will come included with C-clips. It will come, oh shit, I almost dropped it. It will come with all the wrist pins needed. So like I said, we offer oversized performance uh, wrist pins they're plus one millimeter over and a lot of people get confused they're like if it's plus one millimeter over will your pistons work with oem rods and a hundred percent yes they are not they are not wider on the outer diameter they're wider on the interior so instead of coming out this way we widen them that way very simple the uh the wrist pins have the same od as a stock a stock piston will so it will have the same wrist pin uh, diameter and it will still install into a stock rod okie dokie so to start guys as i say always start clean these are clean um you are going to want some lubrication again don't knock it till you try it lysol with oil uh, make sure you obviously clean it out very well. You don't want to leave any of the, the hydrogen peroxide or cleaner in there. Um, so I let it soak. I rinse it out like five, six times, and it's it's a great little tool. So, Jesus, this is already slippery, but I like to get, get oil all over the wrist pin. You get it all lubricated. Now, you want to be mindful of which way you're gonna go. So with our rods, guys, it doesn't matter. They're mirror image. Um, and if you ever see any little gunk like that or anything built up, it's just the um, the storage oil that we put on it, guys. So whenever they're gonna be stored for a long time, we obviously, we don't want them to, to rust up. So we do use packing lube. That's a better word for it. Packing lubrication, packing lube. Um, so it doesn't really matter, guys. You can break these loose. They are, um, they're tight. They're technically hand tight, but they're, you're not gonna be able to get them off by hand. Uh, you don't really need to mess with the rod bolts just yet until obviously you go to install them into the engine. So what we do, it's very straightforward. Made it like that. And that was what I was gonna say. So on our, our pistons, as I mentioned in the last video, guys, we use a stock OEM mold. Like I said, I was mentioning before, the PGK A1, that indicates um, which, which style of OEM piston we went with. And as I mentioned before, we went with a hyper euectic. This is not OEM, you know, cast aluminum pistons, guys. This is 100% hyper euectic, high silicone, um, high high horsepower. It's meant for boosted applications. Um, and as, along with that, we anodized the dome and the first ringland. So you can see here the color change, uh, the different colors. Go look up, say, a DN, DNJ piston, which is a Chinese piston. Go look up a DNJ piston, and you'll see that there is no anodizing. The material is a cast aluminum where we are cast hyper euectic. Like I said again, it's a high high silicone which can take higher loads. And then the anodizing also strengthens the dome, but it also helps reduce combustion temps. And then the first ringland, uh, we went ahead and did the first ringland also because it sees the most um, the most pressures and the most heat from the combustion. So we went ahead and strengthened the first ringland and guys um shit, how many i think we have like two three hundred sets sold man we've never had any issues and it, i take that back a guy dropped a valve and he ate a piston and we had to replace one um but he paid for it because he's he even said it's uh it's not under warranty i dropped a i dropped a valve it's not your fault so out of 300 sets we've sold one piston is broke and that was due to a drop valve so like i said guys we guarantee our our pistons to 800 plus horsepower and our rods are guaranteed to a thousand but they are rated to 13 1300 plus okay getting back into it here so we set it down like that oh shit that's what i was saying the arrow the whole reason i got into this <laughs> rambling um the arrow indicates towards the front of the motor so if we installed it like this it would be wrong because this it's going to point towards the snout so the way you want to install this is like that towards the front towards the snout of the crank so it's going to be like that all right and then so those are going to be upside down there so basically we can just do upside down the whole way and then here they're all going to be right side up 
So to start, we're gonna go, since we're starting with number four, front of the crank is here. And basically it's as it seems guys, you just, you get it started. And it will be a tight fit guys, so this is, the lubrication is helping a ton. You wanna set it in there. And what you're looking for, I hope you guys can see this, you wanna get down, you see that little ridge? There's a little ridge where the C-clip sits into. So you want both sides of the piston. So I went too far there. You can see the C-clip ridge there. You can't really see it there. So I'm gonna go back a hair. I really hope you guys can see this. I think you can. So that's perfect there. C-clip can go in there, lock in, and there you go. That's perfect there. So that's gonna sit there. But first, let's get our C-clips on. All right, so the C-clips guys, be careful because they can go flying. So this, you see that little notch there? That notch is meant to, when you're pulling the, the piston or the, when you're pulling the C-clips off and you wanna pull the piston off of the rod, it's gonna sit down there and like this and you're gonna rotate it over till that little ledge is right there and then you can take your pick and pull it out, pull it in and then the C-clip will will rise up like that and then you can work your way around the c-clip getting it out and reverse or installation is pretty much pretty much the opposite but the proper way to install this you do not want the c-clip like this you want basically a solid piece going through here all right so you're gonna i like to install it like this and you kind of work your way you need to push down and like i said guys be careful because they will go flying and we do our c clips are very our c clips are um are very stiff much stiffer than oem i found um, which is great because you don't want these c clips to come off so basically you need to push in kind of get it to sit down on that track if you can as you can see here and don't worry if you mess up here you can always spin you can always end up spinning the c-clip once it's installed so i do this i kind of try to force it in it's not the easiest thing in the world guys and then once it fucking gets <laughs> oh almost There we go. There we go. Boom. All right. So I hope you guys can see this. C clip is in. You see how it's sitting in the groove, guys? And there you go, guys. Like I said, I like to have a solid piece running through there. It just makes sure that it, it just uh, reaffirms that these two ends are in the channel. I just don't like that being open there and ha having the potential of them snapping out or whatever i don't know i just like having the two ends nesting in the c-clip channel it's up to you guys honestly um we we go by the manual and as i mentioned a thousand times guys if you don't have a book it's simply for torque specs if you don't have a because you're not going to be able to memorize all those torque specs if you don't if you don't have a book you're not going to uh you're not going to be installing the motor's not going to run very long if you're not torquing everything down properly or you're going to end up springing leaks everywhere and then uh, you just do it to the reverse side. You install the clip, as I mentioned before. You just wanna be mindful of how uh, you install it. I usually start one side, I work my way around. And then once the, the clip is on the edge, I use this to kind of force it in and then it'll seat down in there. And I usually turn it to where there's a solid piece, a uh, solid piece of the C-clip running through right there, that opening. I don't know guys, like I said, it's just me. It's just what I do. It's up to you how you guys want to do it. From there, you set this bad boy in here like this. And there's your number four piston, number five, number six. And then you just keep going guys. I hope the video was helpful. Uh, like I said, we got a lot of different um, 
announcements. We have a lot of new product releases. I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys. We are now a Pro Charger dealer, and we are also a Boom Slang dealer. So stay tuned, guys, because we are going to offer Pro Chargers, Boom Slang, uh, tuning adapter harnesses and also we are releasing our 07 to 08 acura tl um, ecu key and a mobilizer basically making tuning plug and play um, especially for honda for the 03 uh the 03 to 07 guys uh accord guys and then the 04 to 06 tl guys that need to swap the ecus this is going to make it plug and play you're basically going to be able to buy our 07 to 08 TL ECU key immobilizer purchased the Honda um, the Honda Boomslang ECU all this from our website and then obviously um, you're gonna have to purchase the Honda uh, unit or tuning system from Honda directly and we're actually gonna talk to them see if uh, we can come on as a dealer with them but for now we're gonna offer everything possible to tune your Accord TL um, TSX and the only thing you'll have to buy off of our site would be the Honda tuning system itself. So anyways, guys, like I said, I hope this video was helpful. We have a lot more coming out. I'm going to try to do one video, um, a video every one to two weeks. I'll try. Like I said, really busy here. We just had the hurricane come through, and I want to make sure I knock out this, this build right here. So, all right, guys, take care. Peace.